have a casual conversation before we get right into it just for you to ease into the into the into your chair and your mic um i need to just see what's your preferred title i want to change your title you see like under your name there like um uh, i want to i want to edit it for you so that it reads like mine you say host yoga with goga sunday service so what is it? you can call yourself ceo people have very weird names there are people who call themselves anti okra crusaders I've gotten um, all sorts of things. I, I don't know, Goga, but in conversation, please just call me Lisa. <laughs> all right. Um, okay, I know what I'm going to call it. Um, so yeah, so I'll, I'll just call it Ona. I love how your name is. Okay. I'll just call a channel Ona. Uh, then you guys can see uh, Lisa J's talks. Thank you so much, Lisa, for making time for this. I know it's been a long time coming, planning this entire conversation, uh, but I'm glad we finally managed to, you know, have you come up on the panel. Um, just to give you like a context on why I, I needed to bring you up on the panel. So I've been getting a lot of questions from the community, especially when it comes to um, both monetized people and non-monetized channels. When it comes to investments on YouTube earnings, what do we do with these investments? What is the future? What is the most proactive uh, way of investing our, to those of us who are monetized, our earnings? And to those ones who are planning future earnings, they're like, if I don't want to go the AdSense route, are there other streams of investments that I could consider if I'm on the social media space or I'm in the content creation space? So born out of this conversation, I was like, uh, we need to get someone who talks investments to come and talk to us. Um, because I know anyone can randomly have this as a topic, but I, I wanted somebody at least who I know whose entire content on YouTube is investment, investments, investments, investments. We needed somebody who speaks investment tees. I don't know whether that's a language, but you get the point to actually come and talk to us about this. And that's why we 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 have you on the Sunday service. And I'm so I'm so glad that we had to accommodate you. I know I normally don't do my live streams around this time, but I'm so happy that at least you managed to create time to just uh, you know come and talk to us, knowing that Sunday is a busy day and we are getting into the holidays. I'm glad you made time to just come and talk to them. They've been excited waiting for it since I posted it on the community page, and uh, they've been like, <laughs> yeah, they've been like, Goga, what are you? And then today they've been sending me messages from eight. Goga, what time are you starting the live? We are so late today. You're so late today, Goga. What time? I'm like, no, I'm not late. I said it's ten o'clock because uh, I told them as early as yesterday it's ten p.m. I'll be late for the Sunday service. <laughs> yeah, but I'm glad they are all here. They they waited, and uh, I'm glad they're not going to be disappointed. So welcome. Uh, just um, just a quick introduction. Who is Lisa? Where is she based? Um, you know, it can be they they like knowing people here. And then um, I see you've already pinned up. I see the live stream is also running on your channel, guys. You can watch this live stream as well from Lisa's side. I see it running there. So we are having a multi-stream. Uh, so you, in case you in case you are like on Lisa's side, you can also catch this live stream. I already see eleven people there from Lisa's side. Uh, feel free to drop a uh, message on the chat. I'll be able to see you and uh, I'll be able to like give you a shout out if you're watch watching from Lisa's uh, side of the world. Um, so Lisa, please take it away. Oh my gosh, Gogo, you have so much to say just now and in your description for this. And I'm so sorry I was not very prepared, but um, so I'm, I'm a newer YouTuber. I just uh, passed the one year mark and i've been keeping all of my content to um to go can you can you lower the music a little bit please oh let me just do that um good idea okay carry on carry on carry on okay. just carry. yeah and so my youtube content is is around um building wealth getting out of debt uh, focusing on investments for yourself, for your children, planning for retirement. And that's all that I'm going to be sharing on this channel, Lisa J. Stocks. And awesome. I think, Goga, you wanted to connect with me because, um, well, part of, I, I don't know where to even start with all of your questions. Um, <laughs> but, you know, right now, as I told you, I am not yet monetized. Um, but you wanted me to talk from the perspective of when we do and just what 
just ways to be responsible with our money in general. So Absolutely. we have to realize that once we are monetized, that is income. And just like with everything else, we need to pay ourselves first. So we need to be um, mindful that once we do start, you know, what even if it's $600 for the whole year, we have to be ready to not be spending that money, putting a portion aside because we have to pay taxes. And I, uh, um, I didn't answer this portion of your question. I am, I'm in the U.S. I'm on the East Coast. Uh, I don't know where the the viewers are from. If it's a very international crowd watching right <laughs> now, but everything yeah. that I can, you know, share is going to be from you know the U.S. Uh, perspective of of what. I know I'm not a financial professional. Um, I'm just a person sharing their journey and and you know good good the good and the bad. But I'm over here and I'm trying to stay focused and and build wealth and and create a better future for myself and my daughter. And investing is a, a key to that that I think a lot of people are missing out on. And I wanted to come to YouTube and be a different voice, you know, to, to share this so that people don't miss out because um, this is for all of us. You don't Absolutely. have to invest out of this. Absolutely. Um, what what inspired you to join investment? First of all, I will start with your name. You know, the first time I, I, I met you, uh, I think I met you at Sheena or somewhere. I used to uh, I used to think that your name stocks. I know that is it talks like your name name or it's uh it speaks to like the content. No, I just threw the stocks on there <laughs> uh, because I'm an investor. Like like some of the people that I I look look up to, like stock up with Larry Jones or stocks with yes. Josh. So just a name that I came up with. Um, yeah. Can you hold on for one second, please? Awesome. Thank you so much. Right. Um. Uh. Okay, uh, wait, let me see. Okay, she has to attend to that. I'll just, uh, we'll just wait there. I see Sheila Network. It's okay, you're on, you're on mute. Uh, I see Sheila Network there. Thank you so much. I see Tamika Davis. Nice to see you. All these amazing people joining from uh, Lisa's side. And guys, if you're on my channel, you can also jump to Lisa's side so that you can give her that support if you want to connect to her. You can watch this live stream from either her channel or you can watch it from my side. It's perfectly fine. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. You're not going to miss out. I know some people always say, Goga, Goga has receipts. I end up missing out when I run to Lisa but you can also just uh, multi you can multi watch some of you have more than one device like steven michalski who is watching from her you know his 10 devices um just to make sure that uh, you know you can see very well uh brother of a certain age nice to see you as well logging in there from lisa's side i will keep highlighting the messages especially the new people mtgv crime podcast these are like amazing people from lisa's family i see all of you fabric studio nice to see you sheila network thank you so much for coming in um dan gede indonesia welcome 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 Okay, Lisa, carry on. So it's uh, so you say it uh, it inspired you based on the kind of content you you normally do. I had to, I had to ask because I wasn't so sure because there's a way you do the double barrel J stocks and <laughs> I thought it was like uh, I thought it was like the part of the name. I thought it was part of the name. No, no, no. Um, no real name. Right. So but, what inspired yeah. what inspired you to what inspired you to talk investments? I mean, you could have been doing other things out there. You said, uh, you know, you have your daughter there. You could have been doing a mom and daughter bonding type of content. You could have been cooking. You could have been, you, you always have very amazing speaking engagements when somebody sees your community page. Why specifically money? Because it's a, uh, you know, as a, as a conversation, we don't like talking about money generally uh, because it makes, it's, it makes us feel some type of way in a way. Why did you pick investments as a focus on your channel? I think a piece of it is that, um, you know, when we went into the lockdown and, you know, the world was changing, um, my life changed there. Uh, I had been laid off two times. I was, wow. you know, trying to start a new job and get on, on track with a new, a new, not a new career path, but with a new company. And around that time, I bought my first investment property. And I think my mind became more open to um, maybe I can retire early. 
Maybe I don't have to continue to be out here in the corporate America and, and dealing with uh, all the ups and downs and the downsizing and, you know, uh, just just what I had been going through there. And I just feel like seeing older people around me, just in general, I felt like I need to be on track with my investing and I need to, um, it, it gave me the desire to start to invest in a different way on my own, as opposed to just in my 401k. And I've been working full time since I've been 19 years old. So with wow. that, I've been contributing to my 401k all along. But even that alone, I, I, I didn't realize that people around me weren't even really on board with that, um, investing and making sure to, uh, as they as their income increased, that they were increasing their contribution to their retirement and being consistent with it and with changing jobs, making sure you have a handle of where it is, taking a look at it and seeing, you know, what rate of return that you're earning, all sorts of different things that I needed to get a handle on for myself. And as I did that, these were things that I wanted to share um, on my level. You know, there are some people that are doing investing and they, you know, they know how to do all the technical analysis mm -hmm. and the options trading and all of that. But I am I am an investor. I, I really I am pretty much 95 percent investor. I don't do a lot of trading and options and other things, but. Whether it's in a 401k or it's in a taxable account that I can tap into before I'm in my, you know, 60s, this is something that I want to prioritize as well as hopefully getting some more investment properties. But these are things that I want to prioritize in order to make my life easier and and to be able to be comfortable and have the become financially free. Right now, I think my efforts have gotten me to being financially stable. Um, and I'm glad for that because I've made a lot of changes in the last few years. Okay. Uh, I like what Jason and Gina is saying. I work the stock market, a lot of money to be made. And then you have Stephen Mikalski who says, you know, he retired 15, uh, 15 years early. So I can see already a lot of people re are resonating, uh, you know, with uh, what you just said. Um, the next thing maybe I may want to just ask is like, um, just get my notes there. Um, when you come into a space like, uh, you know, online generally, because one of the things is like, uh, they always say that, you know, there's a lot of money to be made online. It could be anything, um, even if it's not like the mainstream investments we normally like, you know, talk about. Um, so for instance, let's talk about a channel such as, uh, a place such as YouTube. Let's say you're not even monetized, for example. Um, uh, and then you are maybe thinking of other investments outside the mainstream YouTube, which could be merchandise, it could be partnerships with brands or something like that, especially if you're making great content. Um, you know, what, are, what do you think are some of the ways, especially content creators, or maybe even not even beyond YouTube, it could be other platforms. What are some of the maybe ways that, you know, we can diversify, especially our investment portfolio? So that I'm not just relying on ad revenue or I'm not relying on, let me, let me say my fund funding, for example, super charts, memberships and whatnot. Are there like some ideas you may have for us in terms of just trying to branch out um, using these platforms as a as kind of stepping stone to other opportunities out there? Sorry, it's um, a long wind. Sorry, it's a long winded know. question, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if I have anything different than what you mentioned, but, you know, as your platform grows and you have memberships, that's, and you can maybe create a Discord, um, you know, and, and build from, from your platform here on YouTube, like you said, merchandise, um, but you have to be in tune with what your audience wants and what your audience needs. Um, and I, I, I think that there's only so much that we can do here on YouTube. But if you create another place where you can go and maybe give them the specialized, uh, just give them a, a different level of attention and, and you can get a more deep personal dive into things. Um, 
I, I think that's that's great. But you know, with with everything, um, I, I think you wanted me to kind of share that. Um, you know, we always have to we always have to prioritize that it's all income and <laughs> be mindful if you're if you're earning money from all these different sources of income, put thirty percent aside and maybe decide at, at some point as as you're growing into these you know different um, revenue streams, maybe you should take the time to form an LLC and 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 have the money in under the company, you know, and and be able to um be more prepared for the tax implications because we don't want to just make money and spend it all and then at the end we're not prepared for it i know it's great to have it to increase your income even with you know the stock market i really don't do much of selling right now with my investments i'm really just building up my positions but even with, with that if i do something um i have to be prepared for uh the increase that it potentially could be in my earnings related to my taxes. So, but I think everything that you mentioned, um, just different levels of membership, uh, the merchandising, the discord, I really don't have any other thoughts of, of different ways, uh, depending on what it is that, that you share. But I think discord can be used for so many different avenues, whether you're doing cooking or art or 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 the stock market like I'm doing. It, it can give you a place that you can, you know, like have challenges or share a, a Discord only live stream so that you can connect with, with people that are paying for that uh, that service with you. That's good. Um, I'm, I'm curious to just learn more about Discord. And uh, just just as we, I, I have a question. I will, let me just see that I got it. I have a question from Jasmine. Jasmine Robinson from your house is asking, hello, many blessings. Can Lisa talk about the advantages of disadvantages of moving your money from, let's say, your retirement into your mutual fund? So I think this is a very uh, broad question. Uh, but just before we go to this one, maybe... Uh, to people like us, especially from this part of the world, this God is not like very popular. And maybe these are these some these are some of the avenues we need to like start tapping into, especially if you want to broaden our you know our our space. Um, how does it operate? I mean, if I was to if I was uh, to ask as a ten year old, who is like, what is this God? I do know I I use it mostly for messaging. But um, I didn't know that you said there are many opportunities right there if uh, you opti optimally use it. What are some of these avenues? Okay, so I'm no expert in that in that either. Yeah. But um, with just like how we have different levels of memberships in in um, YouTube, um, yeah. where you can have a basic membership up to you know higher, wh whereas you can have a high level uh, YouTube membership where you can maybe have um, lives or, or, or different content that you share just with your members on your members page. So with Discord, you can link it to Patreon, for example, as a payment form, and then people can buy in the same way. They can buy different plans, or you can have it all set to one level plan, and then they'll be paying for a month, they'll be paying, say, a monthly or weekly subscription in order to be a part of your platform there. And then once you're inside of there, that's kind of your own mini world um, where you can share more in depth and in a different way than you do on, on YouTube. And because this conversation is about um, potentially making more money, it, yes. it's a way to uh, generate more money for you. Absolutely. And I like what because I am mom says, yeah, some ways people can make money by teaching others to open their channels and how to make videos. That's actually a great, uh, a great point. I don't know you want to take, uh, you know, Jasmine's question at this point. Yes, um, yes. I'm going to take I want to touch on that. So I did a video a few weeks back about um, FX, FX AIX. And what I was going through at that time was I closed my um, a retirement account that I had at Empowerment and I moved my money over to Fidelity. So now I have I have three retirement accounts, but they're all under Fidelity. And with that, with moving that money, it gave me kind of a fresh start to a new IRA. So all the money was just there. It was not invested. 
So the first fund that I chose to start investing in over there was FXAIX, which is um, a Fortune uh, 500 uh, investment company. I mean, I'm sorry. It's a Fortune 500 fund that is under Fidelity, very similar to VOO, an ETF that I also have talked about um, a lot. So it gives you exposure to the top 500 companies in the US. What I like about FXAIX as opposed to VOO, I invest into both. I invest in the VOO in my taxable accounts, but FXAIX has, a, has half the expense ratio of VOO. And it's in my retirement account. I'm getting quarterly dividends there. Um, it's It's been, I, I can pull it up, um, but we can go on to another question, but I can touch on a little bit of the performance and it's been doing well. And I had, I had a significant amount of money. I think I've invested, I would say over $30,000 into the fund over the last uh, few like month, maybe a few weeks or to a month, um, because it was a, a retirement fund that I had moved over there. So I have a significant amount of money that I need to invest. And I've been going heavily into this particular index fund. Um, I don't know if I'm covering, let me see if, if they've said anything. I, I hope I'm giving some something to Jasmine's question, advantages and disadvantages of moving money. I think you, you have to weigh the advantages and disadvantages by taking a look at the performance of your particular portfolio. I can't okay. say that it would for you in, in particular, I can't say if it's an advantage or a disadvantage. If I knew what your particular uh, portfolio was performing at, I'm guessing that you're, you're looking and thinking about this because it's not performing well. But I think that's something else that, that I always like to share with people and give them the reminder. Um, even if you're not a numbers person and and you know kind of wanna turn a you know a set it and forget it kind of a, a easy retirement plan, we still have to take time at least if you can't do it every month, every quarter, but don't let years pass and you're not taking a look at your retirement fund because we don't want to wait until <laughs> we're older and it's time to tap into this money and it's not what we expected and it could have been growing much more significantly and we don't want to be sitting here and being gouged with with fees that these people are, are charging us because we have to realize that sometimes there our best interest is not um what is making them choose our investments and putting putting us into plans um, um. Yes, uh, Jasmine says, thank you so much. I appreciate the transparency. Uh, nice to see Nora. Nora is also on your chat. Uh, the Stock Explorer is also there. That's another amazing um, content creator. Uh, you guys are literally uh, see, the, all see right. See the name, the word stock in there again, Goga. Yeah, the Stock Explorer. Yeah, I know Nora there. So like, yeah, Nora is also another one, talks very passionately about stocks. So yeah, there, there goes your name. <laughs> there goes yeah. your name. Yeah. You are the... the yeah, so they, there's, uh, there was another comment that I think I may have missed it. They were saying, um, I am mumbo saying that in the US uh, that people don't take YouTube seriously as compared uh, to TikTok and, uh, you know, Instagram. What's your opinion on this? This is just a broad, um, a broad question. Yes, no, uh, maybe. <laughs> I think it depends on the, the content that they're sharing and the, the person's knowledge. Because if they have any knowledge on what these different platforms pay, they would prioritize YouTube. <laughs> okay. <laughs> makes sense. Makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, guys, feel free to drop your questions. I'll be able to spot them and then I can highlight them. Even if you are like uh, watching from uh, Lisa's side, I'll be able to see them on my chat and then I can be able to highlight them so that she's able to see them. And thank you so much to everybody who is joining Lisa on the other side. Uh, she, has, um, she has done an amazing, like uh, she has a lot of content uh, on her house, uh, just to be able to like, you know, uh, help you when it comes to anything investments. Um, someone is asking, how much money do we need to live abroad or the USA? <laughs> uh, that, that's a broad question. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. Uh, depends on the state that you, you, that you live in. Um, 
And I mean, this past year alone, I was just reading an article that it takes nearly $11,000 more on average to, to maintain what we had uh, back in 2020. And I, I mean, I'm definitely feeling it between the home heating oil, um, the car insurance, just everything has gone up so much. Groceries, uh, and she's at, of course. Uh, but, okay, sorry. Just she's uh, and she's asking that uh, based on this context. I can't retire in the United States because of the high inflation and cost of living for the average person. Um, just to give you that. Well, uh, it's not just you. The people in the U.S. Can, cannot retire. They're working. They're working until they're seventy, and they're, it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have Neophyte says uh, the game of life. Build a two point five million uh, dollar investment uh, to retire using four percent. That's it. Ready, set, go. Um, guess that was a statement rather than a question. Um, let me see. Uh, I will move back to my question. And yeah, guys, keep dropping the questions. I will try as much as I can to see the, the ones I can spot. Um, so just back to uh, back to now the, the platform you're talking about. So we are talking about diversifying income. We are talking about um, getting money uh, off platforms such as YouTube. And then now you have the conversation around taxes uh, to the IRS. Um and I know, I, I know you're not, I, I know you told me, Google, I'm not tax expert, uh, but you know, the good thing YouTube already does that, they already deduct the tax at source. And, um, you know, that's a totally different story. But then now they end up sending you the balance now to your bank account and stuff. Now the conversation is what most of us do with the money we get from a platform such as YouTube. So in my personal experience, I remember like all the, most of the investments I've ever gotten from a place such as YouTube, I've always just, sent it back to YouTube. So it's either the super chats, memberships, you know, give, giving people super stickers and stuff like that. But in 2024, what are some, what is the kind of thinking we need to have as content creators, especially who are earning from the platform? How, what is like, uh, what are some of the investment uh, ideas, however small they may be, even if I'm not going to have a very huge portfolio in terms of investment? What are some of like the creative uh, investment ideas we can think about when we get this money? Um, creative investment ideas. I, I think yep. my ideas are pretty standard and basic, um, but we'll see when I when I start sharing <laughs> here. So I think, um, and, and a lot of, I, I do use Fidelity personally, and some of the things that I'm going to say or share are in line with their guidelines. Um, for example, if you are able to uh, save 15% of your income. And I don't mean that it has to be 15% directly out of your paycheck between, um, you know, if you're gonna get a pension, your employee match um, and your contribution, if you can get to 15% from, and, and I mean from the start, when you are in your 20s, when you are getting starting working, I think that that's a good measure to um, to to get yourself on track and build wealth and take advantage of compound interest mm. that will help you to you know get on track for your retirement. So first and foremost, especially if you work for a company that you get a company you get any kind of a match, take advantage of your whatever you have there. 401k, 403b, I don't know what it's called in other countries, um, but a retirement account, something that is for the future. And then from there, if you have the desire to do additional investing, which is the direction that I've gone, I have um, I have a custodial account for my daughter. For her, I, I happen to use a UTMA account and she has a, a youth account that it's also through Fidelity and she is able to get started. She has a debit card there. She has, um, she's able to do investing on her own with my supervision in her account. And then in her UTMA account, I do the investing for her, but she has visibility to it. And I wanna try to teach her to be responsible and, and to, to see how this money can grow for her in the future. Now for myself, um, outside of my 401k, like I've already touched on, 
you know, know where your money is. And, and, and like with my experience right now, I've only worked for three companies in my, in my adult life. Um, but sometimes people work for a lot more than that. And you have to keep track of your retirement accounts and, and where they're at. Um, so that, you know, you don't lose track. You don't have to have the stresses of looking for it uh, once you move on to different companies. So I don't know why I got off on that. But, uh, <laughs> so then with my investment on my, so I just want, I guess I was talking about that because I wanted to just give the reminder again to take a look at your retirement accounts and see how they're performing, see how much you have, you know, if you're on track with certain goals so that, you know, when you're in your 40s or 50s and approaching retirement age, it's not a surprise. And do your best not to um, think, not to have to, or not to give yourself the option to uh, borrow from your 401k unless you know for sure that you're borrowing it and you're able to put the money to better use and get your retirement account paid back. Uh, mm. So for myself, Outside of my 401k, which I, you know, I, I mentioned one fund already that I'm, I'm doing in one IRA. I have monies in different like date targeted funds there. Uh, say, for example, for example, a 2045 fund or something like that, that uh, is set up through Fidelity. But on my own, I try to keep my portfolio, my daughter's portfolios pretty it's pretty conservative. It's high amount into uh, ETFs that give you exposure to, you know, thousands of stocks in, in one investment choice, for example, VTI and VOO. Um, and then some of my blue chip stocks that I have in my portfolio are like uh, Apple. Um, oh, wow. Apple is one of my largest positions, actually, and it's it's done well for me. But I try to keep it. Um, of course, my brain is uh, <laughs> Apple, Amazon, Google, Tesla. Those are kind of my blue chip stocks for my daughter. I also do a little Home Depot things that you've heard of, most likely. And those are, are what I are building our investment accounts on. I do smaller positions and things that I think are more uh, volatile or skeptical, or um, I don't do a lot of crypto. I do have some crypto. I have uh, some Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Shiba Inu, but that's pretty much it. And those are gonna be much, much smaller positions. I do dabble in things like Target and Disney, and but those are going to be a much, much smaller percentage. The things that I mentioned before, you know, in the beginning there, the Apple, the the Google, those are larger. Oh wow! Um, that, do I need to have like? Uh, I mean, to somebody on the chat is like saying, do I need to like have a? I mean, even if I don't, uh, let's I'm not making much. Do I need to be like be having a very well-paying job? Um, you know to be able to get into some of these uh, investments that you just mentioned? Or how do we, if in case maybe um, it's not as guaranteed, um, like how do you go about it? Because I know you say you, you you've been- not guaranteed. There, there is risk with investing, but yeah. I try my best. That's why I'm saying I'm not putting all <laughs> my money into AMC and charge point, I, you know, I put smaller amounts there. I, I I invest into things that have, uh, you know, over time have a proven um, stability rate of return of say 10% mm -hmm. on average. And that's, I think that we can't look at it as though we can't be that scared to do it. We have to realize that investing and saving are two different things. You build wealth in a different way by, by, from investing, but you have to invest as, as responsibly and in 
in the most conservative way possible if you're worried about the risk. And there's going to be certain years like, you know, what happened with us a few years ago when everything was shut down, the airlines, the, you know, everything that happened, the stock market was completely, you know, had crashed. Um, but in retrospect, if I wish I would have just taken every last time I had and bought Apple stock, but you know, I didn't do that because I was scared. Am I going to get laid yeah, off? What's okay. going on? And, and, um, but investing and saving, it's, it's just two different things. And as far as how much, I, you know, again, I'm, I'm talking from me living in the U S I, I, I proudly invest $5, $10, any amount that I have available. Mm-hmm. And because okay. I have different, pla- even in my retirement account, in the, in the accounts that I have at Fidelity, as well as my, um, my taxable accounts that I have, I have accounts on, on Weeble, on Moomoo and on public. And I've shared videos about all three of those. And what I do there is very often on dollar cost averaging, I don't always go in and buy a whole share of stock. I don't, I can't afford it. My budget does not allow for that. So I just, you know, slow and steady, $10 a day or $10 a week or whatever your budget, you know, you, I don't, I don't, there's no one that I've ever talked to that I've said like your budget, you don't have the budget for investing. Once you get, you know, your, your debt out of the way, mm-hmm. I don't believe that you, you don't have money for investing, even if it's $5, I will invest the $5 consistently. And in time, I will see where that gets me. So in a sense, anybody who is around the world and they are definitely getting some revenue out of a platform such as this, set aside a portion of it and invest it. It's going to pay off eventually. Um, I guess that's what I'm getting from it. It doesn't matter, you know, what uh, what it uh, you know what it is, but you know, whatever small you have, you get what investment um, uh, vehicle works for you, and you you bought on that. Uh, another question that somebody asked earlier was. Uh, Somebody asked, like, uh, maybe you talk about some of the crucial financial planning strategies um, that, you know, we need to think about. Emergency fund is normally top on the list. And I've seen that also in one of the videos that you've done, um, as you know, as as one of the ways of ensuring that at least you are you're being prudent when it comes to financial planning. What are some of the other ones that, you know, you could uh, share with us in this space? Because um, we're now talking broadly. Um and it could apply to anybody. You're saying other than emergency fund, what what else? Some, uh, okay. I, I, yeah, some crucial financial planning strategies that you know people can think about. So I'm just I give that as an example, but you can know you can also talk about it further um, to anybody who may not understand. Um, well, I I, do, I I think that I know interest rates on credit cards are very high, probably twenty to thirty percent. A lot a lot variable rates for people right now. So Clearing up that that uh, high interest credit card debt, um, also being mindful of your credit score, maybe con- connecting with someone to have life insurance. There's so many different things that you can do to make your your yourself more financially, you know, fit. And having an emergency fund is a big part of keeping yourself out of debt and being able to um, be prepared for things so that you're not just in that continual cycle of, you know, the, the getting caught up with a large balance that you cannot pay off in the one month time. And it just drags on and just snowballs. And then you're caught up paying so much interest that you're in a battle. All right. Um, so I'm going to do, do a show hopefully coming up soon with someone that's going to give me a lot of uh, th- that they're, they handle insurance, life insurance. And I'm going to try to have an in-depth conversation with him about that because that's something that I can't really share uh, too much. I don't have that much okay. knowledge on but I, that's something that years ago, about 20 years ago, I, I prioritized 
making sure that I had life insurance in addition to what my company um, offers. All right. So I like that. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. You you had a, you put up a different question. No, no, just carry on. Just carry on. Uh, the the next that question. Is the, that, is the benefit of different accounts. I can't necessarily go. say that there is a benefit to the different accounts. I it, it's more it's preference for me. So on Mumu, I'm building my my dividend portfolio there. On Webull, I was doing um, focusing on like my growth portfolio. Public, I was doing a particular challenge where I was in, I am still investing daily into VTI. So it just kind of gives, it, it works for me the same way with, um, I have multiple accounts at Discover. That's where I, I do like my high yield uh, savings account, like a CD for my daughter, money market account. But I have it broken out into, I would say probably about eight different accounts. So my daughter has an, uh, say, you know, my daughter has her savings account. She has, uh, she has a CD. I have a, a bucket for Christmas. I have a bucket for vacation. I have a, a bucket called emergency. And I literally go in there and I have it labeled this way. And it's my preference. You can have all of your your savings in in one high yield savings account if that works for you. But I I like to have it broken out into to different areas. And just like with my investments, I chose to take advantage of different offers and set up the different accounts that way. And uh, I would say I I, I like I like Webull a lot. It's it's a, a platform that gives a lot of different um, flexibility that you can grow with just, you know, if you want to get into doing some trading, some options, it, it's a platform that kind of, it, it has the fractional shares. The fractional shares means you can buy a little bit of the share. You don't have to buy a full share at a time. A lot of, so different platforms gave me a uh, different flexibility and allowed me to keep my portfolios the way that I wanted to see them visually. And if something goes wrong with a, a particular um, if one of the platforms for some reason decides, you know, we're, we're taking this uh, funds off or something like that, I'll have somewhere else to go immediately in order to continue whatever my investment needs are. All right. Um, let me ask, uh, I like what somebody said earlier, just to highlight this comment by Mbula. Um, Bula says, uh, it's important to attach great meanings to content creation and it's something you can say. YouTube did that for me. TikTok did that for me. ETC, ETC. I think that's a great comment. Um, um, Bula, thank you so much for that. Um, the next question I want to ask when it comes to invest is investment is about um, risk. So before we before we go on to that, I noticed, I, I don't know where the, what the question was exactly, but I noticed someone was mentioning about the spy. Um, yes. I just yeah, no spy. on that. I, I think the, the spy, I think, is a better option for trading as opposed to investing because it has it, the expense ratio on the spy is about three times that of, of VOO, for example, and even more of a higher uh, difference than FXAIX. So for investing, long-term investing, I would go with a fund that had a lower expense ratio. Okay. Um, yeah, you have a comment there by Stacker. Stacker says that certain platforms do not allow you to buy fractional shares, so be careful. Um, I guess that's, uh, that's a statement there. Let me see. Um, I want to get uh, there's a comment there when it comes to risk. And this was like a very overall um, question in terms of uncertainties. And you mentioned earlier when, you know, when the stock market, you know, spiraled uh, some years back. Um, how can how, how can people mitigate risks, especially associated when it comes to investments? Uh, are there any planning tips that, you know, you, you may have, uh, you know, that can help people handle some of these uncertainties or you just like leave it to the market uh, or maybe make those, um, I don't know, risk. Not, not many people have a very high risk appetite when it comes to some of these investments. So what, uh, what are some of the tips out there you may have for them? Well, I would say you you can you can be you 
it, you don't have to choose individual stocks. You can build yourself a strong foundation, start off slow with an ETF, an index fund. Um, you don't have to go and try to pick the 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 stock that you think is gonna is gonna soar because if you don't have the knowledge it, it may not work out that way so be conservative it's okay we don't have to pick the right stock we don't have to pick the right day we don't have to pick the right time you can pick you can choose an index fund or an etf which is an exchange traded fund it's a basket of stocks and you invest into that and like i said many of the platforms that i use allow for fractional shares so if you whatever your pay schedule it is you get paid weekly bi-weekly um i know it might be a bit much for some people but i invest daily <laughs> that's daily so you can choose in and, and you don't physically have to do it there are, i i have an investment that's automated um, that's another thing that, that we will can do is, uh, you can set up automated investments. You can set up your, your deposits going in there to fund your investments. And that's, that's a big thing that people should also consider or really should do because it takes it out of your hands so that when, you know, life gets hectic and crazy, like what's going on with me today, as I was rushing here to get here, um, you know, the same thing can happen tomorrow. But if I have my investments automated, then no matter what happens, my it's going to happen. That's going to be taken care of me. My investments at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I have a, a, an investment that's made for me automatically. So I, I think that that's, that's the only way that I can say is to try to mitigate the risk is to is to put yourself in, you know, long-term funds that, that you can, that, that you can rely on, that they have, have proven themselves over time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and just go from there and then do, I, I would say as a start, you could start off a hundred percent with something like that, with an ETF or an index fund, keep it simple. And then from there in the future, if you want to do some research or add some individual stocks, make those smaller percentages of your portfolio, 5%, 10%. Don't get excessive with those things. Have a strong foundation, build that out for a while, and then, and then move from there. All right. Um, I want to now zero in on uh, your channel specifically, Lisa J's Talks. Um, so one of the things you said was that you started the channel so that you can easily break uh, break down this information in a very in a palatable way people could understand the information around investments. Um, I want to now come in into do you have a particular strategy, especially when it comes to making content around uh, investments? Uh, because coming onto YouTube and now starting to unpack. Uh, and I like how you normally do it when just seated very casually explaining very nicely based on your own lived experience. Uh, I always, I, I, I like that style of, you know, uh, making the, you know, break, breaking down the content. Sometimes you're like, oh, like the, the latest video you did and you're like, I hope the rain is not interfering. You know, just having that light, nice, uh, kind of intimate way of explaining to somebody about uh, in everything investment. Um, so just back to the question now on, what inspired you to again start coming to a platform like this uh, to make particular content and um, what what was like the rationale you know like to start this is not you know people it's youtube people thrive on drama people thrive on a lot of things but you talk investments and that has its own crowd so what actually drew you into the platform <laughs> oh my god i don't know where to start with the, the, what, 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 what is <laughs> <laughs> you can do this. You can do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Question down for me. Um, <laughs> what? What? You're you're asking again? What? What made me want to share this this type of yes. content? Especially on a platform such as this. Yes. Now I'm okay. zeroing in on your content. Yes. You were talking about like how do I how do I figure out what type of content I want to share? I that's that's a hard question for me. You know, I'm still. <clears throat> 
I'm still trying to figure out, you know, how and what to share with the people. <laughs> but I think that I think that my content is important. I know it's not the, you know, I feel like yeah. my content is for everybody, whether you're a gardener, whether you're doing fashion, you know, cooking, we all need to to also prioritize you know, how we're going to build wealth, how we're going to plan for retirement. Um, so I know it's a different, a different genre than most of the people that I interact with, but I, I think that it's content that it's, I feel like I'm for, I, I'm giving the content that is for everyone. I'm not bringing any drama. Yeah. Um, don't, don't worry, me, my ear says you're explaining very well. Carry on, don't be afraid. We are, they are listening in. <laughs> so <laughs> she's like trying to, you know, tell you, don't worry, you're explaining very well. You're explaining very well. Explaining I'm very sorry, well. Gogo. Go. That I am, um, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, <laughs> please <laughs> choose some more questions at me that I can, uh, if, if you have anything else. Yeah. I don't worry, I'm almost, uh, I'm almost actually done just wrapping up. Um, okay. because now, because, uh, I mean, the YouTube platform and we talk a lot, especially on YouTube when it comes to, um, when it comes to a platform like this, audience engagement has been, uh, it's a very huge thing, especially when it comes to admins, uh, especially on YouTube. And you'll notice that, uh, when you get monetized, um, when it comes to the investment content, if somebody wants to get into your niche, uh, for example, um, I always like, uh. I mean, how do you gauge audience engagement in a platform such as yours? Um, because I know you've been doing a number of videos and um, I see a lot of interest, especially like based on the questions, especially that we've been asked here today. Um, how do you like, uh, you know, uh, how do you like gauge that engagement uh, in, a sp in, a sp in a space such as yours? I know I can ask the stock explorer the same question uh, because anytime she gets on starting to talk about stocks, uh, you notice... Um, very few people, of course, will ask those particular questions. Um, so what, uh, what what has been the engagement like in your experience since you actually started your YouTube channel um, from back in 2020, post-COVID? I would, okay, so... This is how we're putting you on the spot. <laughs> I think I've been pretty good about, like, yeah. I use good IQ. I, mm. I, I look at my analytics. I try to be as, as much as possible, you know, I try to put out my videos at the time that, that my viewers are on. Mm -hmm. I, I have, I look at my analytics and I have to accept that this video is not doing well. This video is get, is not get having a lot of engagement. It doesn't have a lot of comments. It doesn't, you know, um, and I have to take that into account, I, I personally choose to take this into account and say, okay, if I did this eight minute video and they're only watching three minutes of it, maybe I need to do something different here. And I'm willing to um, accept that and take feedback. I've got, I got some feedback about my background and my sounds and, and lots of different things. And, and I'm, I'm a work in progress and I've taken that feedback and I've been trying to incorporate, incorporate that and make changes. And, and I will do the same, um, uh, with my content because I want to be here to, to, to support my viewers in the best way possible. And I love this. Uh, and, and the information in a way that is enjoyable and, and teaches them and, and, and gives them guidance. You know, I'm here to I'm here to share my journey, but also to encourage people to to get on track and, and know that we can do this together. Absolutely. I love your studio, by the way. It looks amazing. Um, the background, uh, which goes a lot into um, when it comes to just the branding aspect, especially of a content creator just how you present yourself. Um, I think it, it looks amazing. And I'm sure, yeah, people have been eyeing that uh, that studio, of course, so the chat and the, uh, it's always, uh, it's been a conversation we've been having as well um, in terms of the, of the chat. Um, just getting to my final bits of the questions, just in case uh, anybody else has uh, any aspects. Um, this is on, uh, let's talk about, this is especially especially uh, on uh, the analytics um, analytics in terms of uh, someone who's trying to look for like evidence informed decisions uh, when it comes to investments. And I uh, know one of the things you've said earlier is that uh, 
you look for investments that have been tried and tested like apple and especially when you talk about you're talking about your blue chip kind of investments for maybe most of us in the in the youtube space or maybe even on in content creation space do you have any tips for us getting into 2024 on some of uh, the trends that you may we may want to look at when it comes to investments even if it's like the tech companies maybe that somebody who may be interested you know in in getting some investments from these particular spaces do you have any idea on cap in terms of the trends getting into the new year uh, that you think are going to do well uh, because I'm, i'm assuming having been in uh, having done this for a minute you can easily even project um and you know just have an idea of which are some of the best uh, trends to look out for in the coming year um i would say off the top of my head ai and pharmaceuticals might yeah, be two, two areas to take a look at um i don't want to name any specific <laughs> but that's much maybe those areas if you could you know keep, be, be open to those Ah, okay. Because you know, I'm not I'm not trying to I know I I did make name some things that I actually invest <laughs> in but I'm not here to give specific advice. I want people to 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 realize, you know, you have to make your own choices. But those are two areas that um I I think you might want to you can consider having more individual exposure to. um you you will get exposure to them by investing into the Fortune 500 uh companies and and in that way but if you wanted to have uh you know give yourself a higher level of exposure into those those areas I know what we've all been hearing this so much lately AI so yeah, I know it's a big it's a big it's a big thing <laughs> the moment oh nice 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 yeah. uh All right. Uh guys, I think I'm I'm pretty much done with my questions unless somebody has any specific questions they have for uh Lisa uh before we release her because I already kept her here for like almost an hour. Um I only promised her one hour of uh to take one hour of her time. So in case anyone has any burning question on the chat uh regarding anything investment, you could ask. It could be it could be general, it could be general. I know Mima there was asking how do we invest but I think uh, she captured it in uh, when she was answering some of the questions that uh, that were asked earlier. Uh, so that's why I didn't like really highlight it. Um any questions on the chat? I'll just check the comments really quick. Uh Thanks for you. Okay. Anthony Holmes, nice to see you. Thank you so much, brother. Bossy Vio says, uh <laughs> Okay. Bossy was just saying that, oh, this is speaking very fast, go guy. I couldn't hear. I couldn't hear. I couldn't hear. Um, um okay, you have a comment here. Let me see. There's a there's a comment here by I am mom. Uh let me just highlight it for you. Stocks. Uh Okay I think that's a question do you, you have to be fine uh, you have to be disciplined uh sorry lost it there to cash out it gets tricky and you have to be financially educated people have challenges speaking a free insurance plan uh all oh, that is free i think that's a general comment so, unless you have any interjections lisa um i uh, no i i don't really know exactly yeah. where he's going with this these two okay. states but... <laughs> Yeah, if you're going to be selling your stocks, yeah, you have to be you have to be mindful, but as I said right now, um pretty much investing, not I, I'm not it's very rare that I uh am selling my stocks right now. I share a few months back I sold I sold all of my JetBlue stock, but that that's and it, I was at I was at a loss when I sold it. So, but that's a rare occurrence. Right now I'm I'm in the I'm in the growth phase. I'm trying to build up my positions. Um you have a comment here. Uh, this stuff is very important for everyone. Lisa did a great job explaining. Um that's a compliment. I have a question uh which may be, which may be a bit uh personal. How do you handle loss? How do you handle loss especially when it comes to investments? Um like, like uh, does it say uh, like i mean i'm just trying to imagine like let's say you you hoped that you're really going to get like some great um you know um returns out of this particular investment and then boom life happens um 
yeah. You well, know, let, me put it, let me put it this way, Goga. Like, um, <laughs> I like investments that allow me to sleep well at night. Or if I'm not, <laughs> um, something is going on, like, yeah. you know, I did not really sleep last night. <laughs> if, if something is going on and I'm not able to sleep, I don't want it to be my investments that are keeping me up at night. And I think I've gotten my portfolios to the place where I, I have stresses in life, but my investments are not are are not anything that's that's stressing me out. Yes, okay. I have I have I, and I want to sh- I like to share the good and the bad. There are mm-hmm. things that I am significantly um, down on in my portfolio, but there are also this is why you have to I use the word foundation, and this is what I've learned. From my experience, you have to um, you you have to make sure that you have the solid foundation, and then do smaller percentages into the things that could potentially cause you this type of stress. And I think that's where I'm at now. I'm being held up by the Apple and the Amazon and the and VTI, VOO, Google, but down at the bottom, I have Neo and ChargePoint. Yeah. And, and AMC and Disney, but the balance of what's at the top is, is supporting me so much more than what's at the bottom. And what is at the bottom, the, the things that are in the red are, are smaller percentages of my portfolio than the things that are at the top. Okay. And, and that's, I, you know, and if you can take anything from me, from my experience, it took me a little time to get to this type of balance. So learn from others. I always say that we don't have to go through all the mistakes if someone has already gone. <laughs> we can listen and, and, and you know and and not have to go through it yourself. And that's what I'm I'm encouraging you to do. Take it, take it slow. Don't say don't be scared and don't think that it's not for you. It is for you. We need this. This is a way to build wealth. This is a, a way that, um, you know, I think we all need to be open to and realize that building wealth in this way is different. And other people have had the, you know, I don't want to, you know, bring in different talk about like by color, but brown people, um, people in, in different areas may not have had exposure and the knowledge to do this. And we just think it's for those, the rich the rich stay rich. They always have these opportunities. <laughs> but um, I want us to know that we it may not be at the same scale as the next person, but we have the opportunity too. And you know, we just I have to do things at my own pace, you know. Um, and I, I, I'm just not going to let the opportunity pass me by. I'm not letting anything hold me back. And you know, my investments, investing is there is risk with investing, but if you do it. You just find, I I work to find a way to do it that mitigates the risk as much as possible. I like that. Makes me sleep better at night. Nothing that worries you at night. I think that's that's the highlight. You have have another question here by Ifeani. Ifeani is watching you from Germany. And Ifeani is asking, uh, says, sorry, Lisa, I came in a little bit late. uh, But are there things to watch out for when investing in some new apps? I'm not sure what they mean. They mean by what what investing platform they're going to be using to make their investments on. Um, uh, I'm not. I'm not sure if I understand the question. But yes, you obviously, if you're investing, in order to invest, you're 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 buying. You're being a part owner of a company. So it's it's real. You're a real. um, The process you have to. You're going to have to link your bank account. You're going to have to show your ID. You're going to have to go through these steps in order to fund your account and, and purchase your your stocks, your your um, um, <clears throat> whatever type of equity that you're trying to purchase. So it is a real thing. You're going to have to do those. You're going to have to take those steps. And with that, you have to be mindful of what platform you're you're using. Um, I'm comfortable with the platforms that I've been using. I haven't had any issues. They are, you know, they are well-established companies insured. 
um, you know, as far as when I have fun sitting on them, I've shared on a, a, a few videos about uh, the cash, uh, <clears throat> the cash advantages that they're giving now having about 5.0% or 5.1% even in your investment platforms. And with that, they are FDIC insured. So, you know, up to say 250 or 500,000, a level that <laughs> does not concern me because <laughs> I don't have that much money on, on these on these apps. But you have to take a look and, and do your research and, and be comfortable with the platform that you're going to be using, if that is what they meant by that question. Uh, if any, I hope, uh, I don't know, you, you can clarify on the chat in case of anything, uh, whether she she got your question correct but i think uh, i feel i think she's um she's answered probably to your satisfaction let me assume that uh if there's anyone but okay oh so she was, so if any is saying for example facebook is an app oh i think he's talking about like it, i think investing in uh, apps as companies uh, i think that's what he meant um oh oh yeah is there any risk? I mean, there's going to be risk in, in, invest, in investing in anything. I do have some, a little bit of invest in investments. They, they were free stocks that were given to me from, you know, people using my, my, um, my sign on links, but I have been, uh, I have some Spotify, I have Snapchat, um, and in my opinion, those are things that you can incorporate, do research on, maybe have those be smaller portions of your portfolio. But there, yes, there is. But Facebook, Facebook and the two that I just mentioned, you know, those are things that you, you can invest in. And um, but you have to do your own research and, and make your decision on that. I know I can see. Snap has gone. It's gone up. Um, pretty significantly and Facebook we all know Facebook that's that's a stock that's been going up over the years so I don't have any specific on um, those type of platforms to share but um I do have a little bit of them in my in my portfolio all right um I don't have any other question on the chat uh which goes back, it takes me back now to your final uh, questions, which would now mostly be about your platform, uh, because that's what I know best. What is the what is the future of Lisa J Stocks as a channel? Um, say you get monetized tomorrow. Um, do you, will, will you change will you change your content making strategy uh, to fit in the new status or what what is the plan? What is the plan like on this on this platform? Where you are no I, I i i'm just i'm just here i want to share what is of interest i want to give encouragement um i would i'm going to go back through the chat here and i you know if there's any questions in there that might allow for me to to create a video off of it i will do that I want yeah. to I want to share and I want to help and I want I want to um encourage people to know that like I've been saying over and over that this is for us that we cannot be left out of out of investing and planning for our future if we're in a good position ourselves investing for our children to give them a head start you know potentially uh starting a 529 plan so that they can go to college and not be burdened with all of this um, student loan debt. These are things that I want people to think about. And I know it's hard. I know we're, we're living in, you know, times that are hard, the hardest that we've seen in the last 40 years. Hmm. But any little bit helps, you know, when I when I be, when I was 18, 21, um, I wasn't gifted anything, you know, so if I'm able to, to, to build a, a little portfolio for my daughter, a few thousand dollars, $10,000, anything, um, I know that she will be grateful and appreciative and it'll be a start for her future. So. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, how old is she, by the way, if you don't mind me asking, how old is your daughter? You, you speak about your daughter. Your daughter my youngest daughter is 15. 
Oh, nice. Oh, uh, she's getting there. <laughs> that, you're, you're almost an adult. <laughs> oh, I, thought she... I want her to, to have her mind open to, to these concepts. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the, I love the content that is from Stocks with Josh. Okay, Stocks with Josh, she just confirmed what Lisa said when she came to the live stream. That anyone in Stocks? <laughs> oh my gosh, Josh. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Now everyone has stocks in their name uh, at this rate. I thought it was her surname or something. So it's uh, she. You actually confirmed what she said earlier on in the live stream uh, about why she picked the name. Um, so the second last question I'm going to ask you before I allow you to just sign off and stuff is, uh, what do you enjoy more, live streams? Because I know, I noticed on your channel you also do live streams uh, between videos and uh, between videos and live streams. Which one do you enjoy more on platforms such as YouTube? I do not enjoy live streams unless I definitely I've never okay so I I'm gonna I'm I haven't officially done a live stream. I'm gonna account myself as officially doing a live stream when I do it by myself. Oh you always so, have a guest. Yes, I always, I always have a guest. So I love being up here and talking with someone, having a co-host you know but doing live i i don't i don't care for it because i i have never put myself in the position i haven't put myself out there by myself in order to just share interact with the with the chat and do it in that way so i would say um i'm i'm a content i am a recorded <laughs> content <laughs> is is been my yeah Okay, makes sense. That that is just a curious question. But I love um, doing interviews, and you know, if anyone would like to come on, I I do do that. You know, usually every few weeks, I get a guest on. So if anyone's interested in being a guest, I am open to that. You can reach out. Awesome. That's a great. Uh, that's a great point. Have you considered doing? Um, have you considered doing a, a collaboration with, uh, let's say, Nora? Uh, that is a stock explorer. Uh, and all these amazing people who are, who are doing content on, you know, stocks, investments. I think that should be amazing. It should be an amazing collab. Yes, yes, I have. We I have reached out to Nora specifically in the past, nice. and uh, we just weren't able to coordinate a time. But there are a few people, um, some that I've I've had the nerve to send an email to. <laughs> I, I'm 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 getting there. I'm working up my nerves in order to reach out to them. But I would love to do some more um, collaborations with 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 my fellow YouTubers uh, in this field in this area. Awesome! Thank you so much. Um, I think that's it for me. I will just now put you on solo layout just to give your final remarks. Um, ask people to also connect and subscribe to your channel. I was told that is very important, guys, to to act to do a call to action when you say subscribe. Apparently, the new button lights up uh, anytime you say subscribe, like these things. YouTube, YouTube has been changing things around the platform. So I will let uh, I will let uh, Lisa just uh, give a final remarks because uh, I don't see any question on the chat. And thank you so much to everybody who connected to her. So you can learn more on her space, get to learn about uh, these investments and all these sorts of things. She's, she has a lot of content uh, on her channel that uh, caters to everyone. Everyone gets uh, something that they may be interested in. So we now let Lisa just sign off and then we can we can end the show. All right. Lisa, I will now put you on solo layout. Take it away. Thank you for having me on Goga. Please check out my channel. Come and visit me over there. And let's continue to save, invest, and build wealth together.